Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, let me express my sincere appreciation to President Joe Biden for this invitation to participate in this second summit for democracy. We need to be able to share the experiences of our democratic processes, for through our exchanges, our systems of democratic government, which are so vital for the social and economic well-being of our people, can be enriched. The people of St. Lucia, through the resounding mandate they handed to my party, the St. Lucia Labour Party, in the 26 July 2021 general elections, demonstrated that ours is a democracy that is indeed vibrant. Since the first summit in December 2021, my administration, which is about four months away from observing its second year in government, has taken some significant steps to strengthen that democracy and to fulfill our election promises in that regard. Our 2021 general elections were, however, conducted in some constituencies whose population sizes were not in keeping with the provisions of our constitution, that all constituencies shall contain as a nearly equal number of inhabitants as appears to the Constituency Boundaries Commission to be reasonable and practicable. The revision of the boundaries of these constituencies had been long overdue. In 2015, when my party last held the reins of government, we had set in motion the processes whereby the Constituency Boundaries Commission could have corrected these anomalies. But the then opposition party, which assumed office in 2016, delayed and then halted that process. I'm pleased to report that our government has appointed a new Constituency Boundaries Commission, which has almost completed its work, and is expected that whenever the next general elections are held in St. Lucia, they will take place with constituencies whose compositions will be faithful to our constitution. One of the fundamental plans of my party's electoral campaign in 2020 2021 was that we would return good governance to the people of St. Lucia, who had witnessed its constitutional norms and parliamentary conventions being abused for five years. For five years, St. Lucia's House of Assembly, its lower chamber of parliament, functioned without a deputy speaker, contrary to Section 36 of the Constitution. On the 7th March this year, the Parliament of St. Lucia, at the initiative of my administration, amended the country's constitution to ensure that the House of Assembly will always have a deputy speaker and that no future prime minister will be able to exploit constitutional ambiguity to repeat this disregard of the constitution. We, who are the guardians of our constitution, by virtue of our political offices, must never be the violators of their tenants. One of the threats to democratic government is corruption. Corruption not only retards a country's economic development, but is also an assault on its democracy. To curtail corrupt practices in the functioning of our government service, my administration in August last year passed in Parliament a novel special prosecutor bill which provides for the appointment of a special prosecutor to investigate and prosecute the corrupt conduct of politicians and public officials. If, the, if democracy is of the people, then institutions of democratic government must be from the people. St. Lucia's constitution was inherited from Britain, our former colonial power, 44 years ago, and in its Judicial provisions, our highest appellate court was a British institution, a Majesty's Council or the Privy Council. On the 28th of February this year, the Parliament of St. Lucia enacted a historic amendment to the Constitution, replacing the Privy Council with the Caribbean Court of Justice. By this act, our legislators expressed their confidence in the proven ability of our Caribbean people to be their judges. And by this amendment, they further consolidated our independence from the colonial government. In the years ahead, we shall be embarking on additional constitutional reform to make our supreme law a genuine product of our culture and governance experiences and truly reflective of the will, ideas, and philosophies of our people. Even as we do so, we will continue to maintain, uphold, 
and protects the fundamental rights and freedoms to which our people are entitled, which are enshrined in our constitution, and which they are enjoying. It gives me much pride to see that in St. Lucia, democracy is alive, democracy is well, and democracy flourishes. I thank you.